Welcome back to another episode of Wine and Design. And today we are here at Bar Helix with owner, some kick-ass person, all things above, Kendra Anderson. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're doing my favorite kind of episode because we're actually dropping the design talk today and we're just boozing. Boozing it up. So we called Kendra up and we said, pick out two wines that are just going to be fun and gave her no other guidance other than that. So I'm really excited to see what... Good thing we what, like wine. What gets in the glass because of that. Okay. Well, we have two totally different wines, two totally different styles, different countries, different grapes, as different as they could be. So we will start, I think with this wonderful Barbera d'Alba. Okay. I think I know that you like Italian wine. I love, and I've, and, I, like. and I've been to Alba. Oh, um, wonderful. This is where I fell in love with wine. Um, if you have not been to Piedmont, which many of you probably have not, it is the best place on the planet. One of the best, at least. <laughs> at least one. Um, such great wine, and I'm passionate about Barbera because, um, you know, in my work as a sommelier, I get a lot of people who are familiar with the bigger names or right. the bigger regions. So um, in, in Piedmont, as yeah. you mentioned, the region that people really talk about is Barolo. Yep. And that is where some of the world's best wines yep. um, come from, certainly. But for the everyday drinker who may not have access to wines yep. of that price point or that particular style, Barbera d'Alba, which is yep. right next door, is a perfect way to kind of get an introduction to the region. Yep. I also like Barbera because I think it's a little softer. It's yeah, a little more um, user friendly. I and would call generally it. more affordable because Barolos more affordable. are not what you would known as not a bargain known wine for, for value. Um, but right. great wines, no question. I'm yeah. thirsty, so I'm so going let's to get just in right in to a little Barbera a little toast. Cheers to us. And let's take a look. This one's really fruity too it for is. Barbera. It is because uh, um, Italian wines are not, are not known for being no. overly fruit forward. So for us, our guests here at Bar Helix are curious about wine, but again, in order to sort of make it a little bit more approachable, I choose wines that might be from old world countries yep. or regions, but that could give them something more familiar that they might be expecting from like, say, a California wine. Yeah, and what I would say about this wine is um, Italian wines are uh, super acidic generally, mm -hmm. and they usually beg for food right off the bat. Right. Um, while I would absolutely say food would be fantastic with this, it does have that element of you can drink it on. Absolutely. This could be a happy hour wine for. Sipping. And you know what I noticed? Um, Kendra did not provide a spit bucket, so I think that means we have to finish I this. I mean, if you I think you we must. have to finish this before we go on to the next one. I think you must have to, yeah. Um, well, so bottoms up for that bottoms one. Bottoms up, let's do it. That's a big sip of wine. It's a tough job. <laughs> But we had to. We had to. Um, so fun. I've been peeking at the bo the back of this bottle right here, yeah. and and I know what you're about to, to unveil, and I'm super excited. Me too. This is where the wine geek in me comes out. Okay. So tell them what you saw on the back label. Cahors. Yes. And for those of you who think Malbec is from Argentina, and don't get me wrong, there's some fabulous Malbec in Argentina. Cahors is the birthplace of, of, of it Malbec. It is indeed. Uh, it is an amazing wine, uh, amazing grape grown in, in a... a very unknown yeah. region of Bordeaux. Yeah, I mean, it's usually a blending yeah. grape. That's where people, if they had heard of it, they would expect it to come alongside Cab Sauvignon, yeah. Cab Franc, Merlot. Um, so yeah, Cahors has its own right to yeah. making great wine, and in this case, it's always Malbec. Yeah. So my goal here, same as what I said with Barbera, take something that's familiar, mm -hmm. so people do generally know the grape variety yep. Malbec, but they rarely, if ever, knew that it, A, originated in France, or yep. what it tastes like when it comes from France. Absolutely. And I'll say, I think you already know, totally different. Oh, uh, totally different, and that's one yeah. of the most fun things. If you're at home, um, and you wanna have a fun wine drinking experience, go to the store, pick one grape and get it from two or three different regions yep. and, and just see what California, the heck happens. And then one from France. You can get Riesling, you can get Sauvignon Blanc, you can get really any grape variety from someplace in the New World, so yep. California, South America, um, Australia, and same grape from Old World, France, Germany. You got the idea. So Malbec here, in this case, still tastes malbec -y. And I jumped ahead of you. I'm already like, oh no, I'm, I'm guessing you. But I'm, I'm, I'm guessing where you're going. Yeah. But still, it it reminds us of Malbec. It's what it Malbec is at its root. I think at its core. And it's a little um, uh, dirtier, right? It's oh, a little yeah. bit earthier. Yes. It's a little bit. Um, this one not so much as some others that I've had. But it's a little got more of that kind of 
earthy, um, sometimes a little barnyard flavor profile that you can get. Yeah. And and then you end up getting the beautiful fruit on the palate. Yeah. The first time I had a Cahors, I remember it smelled like manure. It and, does get a little dirty. And I was like, earthy. And one one thing, so if you're drinking wine, this is one of the the absolute truths. It's made from fruit. So you have to taste or smell fruit. If you're not tasting fruit or smelling right. fruit, it doesn't have to be the both, then something's right. wrong there. I would say so. And I think that what makes this wine particularly fun to do in like that side-by-side -side thing mm -hmm. with where you got one from yeah. South America, let's say, and then you have this Malbec from mm -hmm. France, you really could notice the similarities and those differences. But the fruit would be, I think, one thing you could pick up in both. Absolutely. So I think the homework for me now is to go to Cahors yep. right. and to drink wine from the source. And then go back to Argentina, drink wine from the source, and then Tell go. Tell us your thoughts. And then go to the Grand Valley of Colorado, since we're in Colorado. Even more really and good get Malbec. a Colorado Malbec and see what the hell just happened there. I feel like you could spend the rest of your life doing just that same example over and over and just continue to report back to us. So, this is what happens when you come to Bar Helix. You have a couple <laughs> glasses of wine, and then you book trips to France, Argentina, and the Western Slope of Colorado. Correct. And that's what life's all about. That is what life's all about. And cheers to that. Cheers to that. Well, thank you for having us. And we'll see you. you next time. And yeah. we'll see you for another episode of Wine and Design in the very nearest future. Next time we might talk a little bit more about design. But we'll definitely have some more wine. More wine. More wine for sure. Yeah. All right.